no sé si te importa a ti Yo me siento bien desde que nací Bien, 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 bien El tiempo bien, rodeado bien, de cubanos Imagina de man Yo no sé si te importa a ti Yo me siento bien desde 3, 2, 1 We are live in Paul Antonic With Benvindo Fonseca How are you doing, Benvindo? I'm well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's always nice to see you, to be with you, and it's nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. It's it's always nice being with you, Benvindo. Um, when I began doing this program, you were one of the first uh, people I had in mind to invite. Um, you're an amazing choreographer, you're an amazing professional, and more than anything else, you're an amazing friend, and I, I want to have you here with me. Oh, Paul, thank you. You know that I love you. I can really say that I love you. And um, and I really appreciate all of your help, specific with all the galas, with the ballets that I have been doing. Thank you so much. I'm here. You're there. <laughs> Always. You're there. And I know that you're there also. I'm here also. And we're very close, actually, Benvindo. So we should get together one of these days. Why not? Why not? And now we are close nearby, isn't it? Because from yeah, Prato. Yeah. We're very, very close. Where, where are you exactly? Um, I will not tell you online. Oh, online, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. And then you'll send me the message. I will. I will. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Big star of dance. Uh, one of the biggest stars of Gulbenkian Ballet. Um, if not the biggest star of the company. Unfortunately, the company closed many years ago. And Benvindo began his career as a choreographer. And I must say, he is one of the most interesting choreographers um, of the last many years. Uh, Benvindo, tell us, for the people who don't know you that well, um, a bit more about yourself. Tell me about this superstar of Gulbenkian. Who is Benvindo Fonseca? When you say superstar, I, I get embarrassed. It's it's funny because uh, normally we like that people call us star, but when they call us, it's it's uncomfortable. But it's whatever it is. And um, I know that uh, everything that I do, I do with the, all of my ability and uh, with all my strength. And I try to do always to share because uh, for me, everything needs to have an intention. So when I do something, I need to have an intention before. And if the intention works for me, then everything, uh, then everything follows. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. A, what can I say about me? I'm the son of Zaida Fonseca and Benvindo Fonseca. I have three sisters and one brother. He's a pilot. My sisters, they have other careers. One, she's a lawyer or whatever. And uh, we are very. We, we we are really really friends. I used to say normally that we are a hand with six fingers, because all of us we are six. I was born in Mozambique and I came to Portugal after the independence of Mozambique because my parents uh, they were working for the Portuguese government in Mozambique, and after the independence the government called the government of Portugal called them to come. So we came to Portugal and I'm here since 40 years. And um, when I was a child, a kid, I used to say that I wanted to be a Beatle because I thought Beatles was a career. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, because my sisters, um, they were playing, my, my parents, they put me into play tennis and in um, rolling skating since I was four years old. Uh -huh. And then after they start to play basketball because they were national champions in, in Mozambique and in Portugal. And because of them, I start to play bas basketball also. Uh -huh. But um, I, I've always, like I told you, I always wanted to be a Beatle. I don't know what that was or that meant, but for me it was something that uh, was an artistic thing because I yeah. always wanted to be, I know if you know that, I always wanted to be an opera singer. That's what I wanted to be. I know this, of course, Benvindo. I know you're a big opera fan. And ah, uh, yes, I you have an amazing voice as well. Thank you. Thank you. It's because, you know, the voice, I, I had lessons 
for that. But um, the voice comes as a support for um, my limitation because of my the problem that I have with my my uh, with my hip because I had a replaced hip, and I needed to to share and I needed to communicate somehow. And the voice came as a help because since the body was limited, so I start to use more often my voice. But I really mm -hmm. enjoy to use the voice. It's um, a, a deep connection with, with the others. I don't know to explain better. When when you one of your most interesting pieces and mm -hmm. the first piece I saw of you was Renace. Yes, um, yes. I remember I was in Teatro Camões in Lisbon. And uh, <laughs> for some reason, I remember very well. For some reason, we shared the same dressing room. And as I enter the, the dressing room, I see this man, Benvindo Fonseca, stretching with incense, doing yoga. And immediately, we had a very nice connection um, as people. Mm -hmm. That's and true. And then I saw you on stage doing Renace, and I was completely crazy with your work. Thank you, Paul. I remember that, that day very well. Actually, I used to tell my friends all about it because we, we met when I was stretching and doing my prayers and my things, and then you left, and then you saw you on stage, and then I was refreshing the makeup, and then you came straight forward, and you told me, I want to work with you. And I did my hands like this. <laughs> Immediately, I saw a beautiful man came in front of me, <laughs> and I said immediately yes. And it was the beginning of of, uh, of something very very special, Paul. Yeah, I'm very thankful about it. It was um, all the places that we went that we're still gonna go. And yeah. uh, yes, it was uh, it's 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 been a, a wonderful journey. Yeah, I I agree with you, Benvindo. I think that. In my life as a, as a manager, as a dance empresario, I think that mm -hmm. one of the strongest relationships I've, I have created has been with you. You know, you know something, Paul, that um, first of all, and then I, I research about you and I, I really um, found about everything that you, did, that you do. But the most important thing, I'm a very um, intuitive person. When I saw you, I like you immediately. But and then when we spoke, uh, you were very interested. And um, of, uh, in, uh, I have the word in Portugal that says matriz. Or, or, on, and on the, um, the, the most important thing, on the, the reason why I choreograph and why I dance. That mm -hmm. was impresses me because you were really interested in that. Mm -hmm. And that was really something that was like a wake up call to say, yes, he's someone yeah. that you should be with. Yeah, I have always been interested, as you know, in the creative process more than anything else. And I think that, that many times today, especially, uh, most of choreographers or artists are not so interested in the creative process. They are just producing a product. It's true. And you were interested also in me as a person. Very and that, that means right away a huge difference because the most important thing for me, it's people. Uh, of course, you have to need to have talent. You need to know what to do. But uh, the connection between people, it's really interesting, specific nowadays. And uh, it's really, really important uh, because we have to take care of, of others. There is always a reason for us to meet someone because it's um, we 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 help each other. I think all of us. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the way things works. Specific now, after all this pandemic, if we don't work together with other people, I don't think we're gonna make anything. Because yeah, I agree we, with you. There, yes, there is a word in Portuguese that we say synergy. I don't know in English if synergy. it's like that. Yeah, in, in English, of course, it exists as well. No oh, good, because we need to create synergies to do things. Yeah, definitely yeah. that. Yeah, we have to create synergies uh, for producing things. And um, also, um, I think that people that appear uh -huh. in each of our lives are gifts, gifts that life gives you. I agree totally. I agree totally. And um, people are, are a mirror of ourselves. 
Mm -hmm. So we have to see them, to learn, to see what we don't like, all of that. It's true, it's true. Benvinto, you moved from Mozambique to Portugal when you were what, mm -hmm. 10 years old? No, I was 12 years old. 12 years old. How was this, yes. this movement from Africa to Portugal? How did you experience this? How did you live this emotionally, physically? Emotionally, it was really painful. Uh, my parents, they say that I readjust very quickly to every situation because I was brought up like that. Mm -hmm. My parents used to, to, to raise, when they raised us, they used to arrange ways of, of, uh, of us as kids to play with different kids from different uh, social uh, agreements. So I was used to change and I, I readjust myself very quick to any situation. But I felt that I was, that something was separating me from, from, from something that is my, my heart. And it mm -hmm. was in the beginning, I, I, I had friends, I always had friends everywhere. So it was easy to find friends. But there was something here that I felt that it wasn't mine. O of course, we have the same language, but people yeah. are totally different. Never in my life everyone called me by the color of my skin. And all of a sudden, someone here called me black. And then I was like, what? And then because I have such a special parents, they helped me to go through that moment. But I never thought myself about color, about sex. I just think about myself as me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, uh, that was something also but uh, very quickly it's funny huh? in life I always said like you I always have uh, people that comes to my life and then they they orientated me they orientate they orient I don't know the word in English and they 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 guide me it's the word they guide me to the place that i'm supposed to be maybe mm -hmm. because i work maybe because i deserve i don't know or maybe because it's my 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 sign and um, that happened also so i always had friends that were with me my parents always support me and i always lived in the very protect worlds mm -hmm. because um, i normally i go to places that i know that i'm safe so it was a, it was a different journey, but I learned a lot. And it's it's when I see other people's lives, I I, I realize that they all went to something. So it's the way yeah. it is. Yeah, we have all gone through through difficult um, moments in our life or difficult situations, exactly. and these exactly. difficult situations is what makes us what we are today. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, they become oh. we become strong. We don't. Oh, yeah. um, so Sorry? this young Benvindo Fonseca arrives to, to Lisbon, Benvindo? Uh-huh. So I arrived in Lisbon, and then uh, it was an audition for a musical. Um, and I went to the audition, they accept me. And it was the first time that I met dancers, real dancers, because yeah. I used to watch fame and things like that. I used to yeah. imitate everything that I used to see in television, actors, singers, whatever. My mother used to sit and laugh all the time. It was funny moments. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then when I met these dancers, they, they told me, oh, you should go to the conservatory. You should go to these classes and that and that one. And then they took me to Liliane Viegas. She's a very known teacher. She's from Morocco, but she lives here. And then she gave me a, a scholarship. And you know, funny, I always had, had dancer as an intuition. I used to do not one or two, but three double tours in the air. And I didn't know what was that. It was just wow. turn and go boom, 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 boom. Wow. And turn wow. like nothing. I used to, get, like five periods for me was normal. It was like turning. And then when they tell me, they told me, no, you have to have a pass like this. You have to come from fifth. Then I lost everything. I only recovered five years later in New York with Maggie Black. And after, um, after the, the Lilian, I went to the conservatory and they put me on the fifth year right away. How old were you? And I was uh, 16 years old. 
I was 16. And then I heard about Kubenkin because the dancers from the conservatory, they used to go to watch the, the rehearsal performance in, in Kubenkin. And then I saw the company for the first time. And Paul, I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing. I never, I never thought that in Portugal we had a company with that quality, with that style, with that level, all the building is something. It's a bit intimidating, huh? Because all yeah. the building, it's, it's something. And uh, all of a sudden I said, I want to be here. And I heard that they had an audition for the school because foundation at the school. So I went to the audition. We were around 300 dancers. Wow. And then, yes, I stay until the last 10. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make this. And then on the end, George Salavisa, he told me, Oh, you, you, you need to lose, to lose weight. So I'm not going to stay with you this year. I was so mad that I came home. I made a big, huge plate of biscuits and I told of them. And I said, <laughs> next, year, next year, I will come again. So the year after, I went again. And it's always around 300, 400 people because it's the best school. Yeah. So the old dancers, only three of us was accepted the school, I was one of them. But after three years, normally, they invite you to join the company, and they didn't. But Rui Horta saw me in one of the performances of Liliane Viegas because I was studying. I was sometimes going to the conservatory in the school of Gubinkin, and sometimes I used to do performance with Liliane. And Rui saw me and he said, I want you to work because it's going to start a company um, uh, that calls Lisboa, uh, Companhia de Dança de Lisboa. Okay. So he gave me a contract as a soloist. I was in the company for two years, and then my parents and the company decided to send me to New York for one year. Mm -hmm. Poli was a huge change. I changed totally. Uh, and a good thing is that I made all the auditions that I could, and all, all of them I was accepted. So it was good for my self-esteem. Of course. And, and after a while, I met some of the dancers from some companies. I don't remember. Uh, um, Louis Falco, I think. And then they took me to Maggie Black's. Maggie Black's class. Uh, Barishnikov used to go there. Makarova used to go there. All the dancers from... Uh, all the dancers from... Um, uh, from American Ballet Theater, all of them. They used mm -hmm. to go to that class. And she had two classes, one at nine o'clock for the classical dancers, and then one at 11 o'clock for the contemporary dancers. And I used to do both of them. And wow. she used to wow. call me the Portuguese, exactly like this, the Portuguese. And it was so funny <laughs> because the room was huge for a it was for almost, I don't know, 50 dancers or something. And she had a small mirror. And I wanted to watch myself in the mirror at the bed. Yeah. And she used to say, mm, 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 not ready yet. <laughs> and Paul, I changed completely my legs. All of my turns came back, double tour. I never did three tours again. It's funny, huh? But no, no, really. it's, not, it's not really funny, Benvindo, you know? A couple hours ago, I was talking to Sidi Larvi Sherkawi, you know, the yeah, I love him. I love him. Yes. We, were talking, we were talking exactly about the same thing, about the moment in which you begin, you know, mm -hmm. forgetting that to dance is fun, you lose everything. It's true, but I have to really think about that because. Uh, Turns, no, I, I became to turn like seven. And rem this is, we are talking about uh, 90, uh, no, 81. It's okay. not now because now it's normal. All the dancers, yeah. they go like, brrr, they turn, they turn. And it was, but the, the three tours, I never did again. It's, it's, hmm? yeah. so, but, and, <laughs> and then I came to, 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 to Lisbon Dance Company. And I was there for a while, but I did an audition for Ervinelli and he accepted me. So I came to Lisbon to say goodbye. So I went to Gubenke to do a ballet class, a regular ballet class. And all of a sudden, George Elavisa called me and I said, I want to speak with you. I said, what does he need of me? But okay. So I went and he told me, Benvindo, you know, with you, it was a mistake. 
But you know that the door is always open. And actually, I want to invite you to be a soloist in the company. That was, the, it was like a shock because in Gubenkin, we have to, first, you have to be accepted to, as an stagiaire A, one year, next year, B, three years, C. And then you have to become a core of ballet and you can stay there. Yeah, and then not. they have the, Yes, and then they have uh, the, the, the people that dance in, in front of the core of ballet, and then they have the soloist. And, don't, and they, he gave me a contract as a soloist. I was 20 years old, Paul. I couldn't believe. And then it was like the all open, the whole world open in front of me. Right, and uh, so there I was. And it was really the, um, you know, that it's um, the company, Gubank, and when I saw it, I, I never thought it was a Portuguese company because of the quality, the things that I told you a minute ago. But to be there among dancers that I admire, among choreographers that I only saw on TV, was so special. Was really, yeah. really special. Yeah. Was really, I, can, really special. I, I even feel emotional to speak about it. It was really special. I'm sure. I'm sure, Benvindo. Um, Gulbenkian was one of the most important contemporary companies in the world, and not many people know this, huh? It's true. And, they, 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 and normally people, they think that we only did contemporaries, but not. We used to do neoclassicals also in point, because Gubenka was a ballet company until 77. Mm -hmm. So we were 91 dancers. And after 77 with George Lavisi, it became a contemporary, but neoclassical. We used to do all the point works and the neoclassicals. And then after 86, we, we only did uh, point shoes, but contemporary work exactly. Right. Benvindo, okay, so you enter the company as a soloist, which is mm -hmm. already very strange and, and very uplifting for you, you know, for your ego, yes. for your, you know. How does Benvindo Fonseca change from the dance student to the auditioning person in New York to the star of Gulbenkian? What happens to Benvindo Fonseca? Mm, that's, that's a very nice question. You know, I always was very naive somehow. I was so happy to be there that I didn't even think about me growing as a person inside, but I was growing. And um, I never felt that I was anything more than anything. I always felt that I was special because my parents, they gave me that self-esteem. But I never thought that I was, I don't know, the one. I always felt that I had the place to be there. There was something that I deserved. Mm -hmm. It was very unconscious. It was very unconscious. So I was dancing and enjoying the moment. But it was a moment... Uh, around when I became really first dancer of the company, that my ego was a bit inflammated. And then it was exactly on the same moment that I start to have pains in one of my legs. Wow. And they didn't, they didn't, it's, 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 um, it's weird. Huh? It was exactly on the moment that my ego was a bit inflammated because people, they, they used to treat me always very special everywhere. It was like, uh, pfft, Something sometimes a bit embarrassed. It was like, what is this? <laughs> a bit too much. And um, I used to be in the magazines every week, like not the dance magazines, all the magazines. In the restaurants, they used to have places for me. In the discotheques, because I used to go there to the discotheques, I was very young. I used to have bottles on my name, always surrounded by beautiful people, models and around, and uh, always alone. It's funny. I always was alone, but surrounded by people. It was my fault, Paul, because they wanted to, to be with the star, and I wanted to be with people, and maybe I wasn't mature enough to say what I really want and to choose the right people. So I was surrounded by people, but alone, but always surrounded with beauty, with the, all the best things, uh, whatever. And, I've, um, I've been with <clears throat> I've been with you in, in Lisbon, and I, I know this is this is true. This is a fact. Uh, you're a mm -hmm. superstar, and and people love you in the street and stop you in the street. Uh, you are a big, they, big yes. superstar. People, they give me they give me lots of love. Now I yes, feel that it's love. It's something that I'm I 
como digo, conquistei. Yeah, I achieved. That I achieved, yes, thank you. And uh, now I think that it's love because they really, I think people, they really like me because now they really know me. Yeah. And before it was because only of my work, but now it's everything combined. So Benvindo is this young guy um, at the top of his game, uh, mm -hmm. superstar, uh, going to discotheques, meeting people, beautiful faces, beautiful bodies, um, drink, night, excess. What happens to you, Benvindo? And more, and the words, <laughs> the words, Paul, awards everywhere. I became ambassador of United um, Nations and all the words, I have awards everywhere. And mm -hmm. the funniest thing, it's um, when I told you that I had a problem in my feet and then they didn't discover. And because foundation, the center, it's in Lisbon, but we have another foundation in Paris and another one in London. So mm -hmm. they sent me to London to do a checkup and they didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. um, after years of treatment, uh, they realized that I had a stretch fracture in one of the bones. So I was compensated all of my weight on the right leg. Mm -hmm. And when they discovered this stretch fracture after three years, uh, I was already damaging the, the, um, the sucker bone of the, the hip. So yeah. when they discovered, I had a huge problem in my in my in my uh, in my bone. In the, I, I now I don't remember the word, and um, in the femur. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. sent me to Holland. They sent me to Holland to recover uh, from that that situation. And after three months of enormous and very heavy therapy, starting at nine in the morning and finish at seven in the afternoon with swimming, massage, strong, every, every, everything. And But it was um, special because I even had a chauffeur because they really treat me the way they think that I deserve. I had a chauffeur, an hotel, everything that I, I needed to, to recover. And I was there for one year. After three months, the, told them, the doctor called me and he told me, there is no improvision, um, improvisation on this situation, so the dance stays here. I couldn't believe what he was saying, Paul. I was in shock. I started to shake exactly like this, and then they give me pills to sleep, and I have a nurse with me 24 hours. I used to sleep the whole day, wake up, and then they used to give me sorrow and sleep for a month because I was in shock because they told me that I couldn't dance How anymore. Old How old were I you? I was 33 years old on the top of my career. And uh, people were inviting me for galas everywhere, not because I was the dancer of Uwenke, but because they know me. So yeah. it was, and uh, I was already choreographing the company as well. So I had lots of invitation and I couldn't even do anything. It was like dying, really dying. So I, I decided this. I decided it's so if I cannot dance, I'm going to die. I'm going to kill myself. That it was it was stupid, but that was what I felt. And because I know everyone, once they gave me cocaine in London, and because I didn't drink until I was 33 years old, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. I was like, hmm, this is nothing. I'm a person that speaks already a lot. So they, they told me, oh, you spoke a lot on that day. I said, but I, I speak normally like this. So I felt <laughs> no different. And then um, that was when I was, I think, 27 or something. I tried just once. And I never had like um, a wish or appreciation for drugs, alcohol or anything. So it was like once and this is it. But when I was on that moment with the pain, specifically, specifically with the emotional pain, not only the physical, because I had pain, I had pain 24 hours. I couldn't even be sitting, it was like buying in my hip every time, amazing. And even my face changed because when you live with pain, it's not living, it's like surviving. Yeah. And um, I, use, I used, uh, normally, I couldn't recognize myself in a mirror. I was like, who is this? Something, it's, here and, and different and change. It was the pain that I was going through. Yeah. So when they gave me that time, the, the first thing that I felt, I felt that emotional pain disappeared. And the physical pain was smoother. 
I thought, oh, this is the solution somehow. But I was doing uh, nothing. Was it cocaine, Benvindo? It was cocaine, yes. Uh, but, uh, but I was still in, in Amsterdam. I mm -hmm. was still in Amsterdam. So I decided, now I'm going to kill myself with this. But it's to kill myself. I was in a huge depression for 10 years. And um, I didn't use every day. I used to use like three days and then stay three months regretting for what I did and crying. I couldn't see any dance, any performance, anything related to a stage. So I was in depression and at home with someone, normally a nurse or whatever, and with my parents and crying. It was, so I was like this for 10 years. And then uh, I, I had a boyfriend there that sent me the first treatment that I did. And the first treatment was more physical than, um, uh, than, uh, than emotionally and psychological. So it went to nothing. Drug treatment, so, yeah? Sorry? Drug treatment? A drug treatment, yes. A, a treatment for addicts. And the, <laughs> it was funny because when I went there, <laughs> I came with all my furs. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I came with all my furs and everything. With the, with the fur. And then they, I saw a room full of beds. And I told them, I'm not going to stay on those beds. I have a private room, isn't it? <laughs> and then they said, oh, we don't know. I said, no, 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 because I'm not going to stay here. <laughs> and then one of the, the, the therapists said, oh, you have to go and speak with the director. But my parents went there with me and they left right away. Because I said, no, 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 I'm not going to stay here. Sleep with other people. What? No way. So, but I stayed for one yeah. year, for yeah. one year, treating about all the causes, all the physical things. And after that, when I left, after one year, I decided to, to give an award to myself because I was there for one year. So I ended I'm going to travel. So I went to, to Barcelona. On the first day that I arrived in Barcelona, I pick up a glass of champagne. So I relapsed. And after that, I realized that I relapsed. I was in the depression again. I stayed in my hotel room for five days, crying. And then I came home. I was clean again, but uh, a bit ashamed because when you do a treatment, you grow as a person. You know how to behave. And when you do something wrong, you feel like, uh, uh, I don't know the word in English, that you, that, uh, that you shouldn't do those things somehow. So, yeah. and that helps you to go and look for more drugs or alcohol or whatever. But uh, I did, Paul, I did 10 treatments. Because the problem was, because each time I used to do those treatments when I used to come back to my regular life, I wanted to become the Benvindo that I was when I was 30 years old, I wanted to become, to be on the same spot, the star of the bank, and I wanted the same boyfriend. I wanted everything the same. So it, it was relapse and relapse and relapse. But you I, know something? Yes. During those moments, um, when I used to, to even use drugs and alcohol, if you ask me money, I used to give you right away. I become even softer. It was stupid, silly. I become even nicer. They ask me this. I give. I give everything. It's silly. And during those moments, life gave me the chance to be with people that otherwise I will never be in touch with. People that really are in the, in, in, inside in the in the, in the social um, social neighborhoods. People that are really in difficult lives. That uh, it was a chance to really meet people and to see that everyone has a story, that everyone has something. It was a, a really wake up call. I, I grew a lot as a human being. I wouldn't change a thing, huh? I wouldn't mm -hmm. change a thing because it was last, really growing. The last rehab you had, uh, I knew you. I remember exactly mm -hmm. when you went to rehab for the last time, when you get, got completely healthy. What happened? Yes. I'm, I'm clean for 13 years old. 13 years old. 13. <laughs> what, what happened, Benvindo, that the last treatment worked? Why? You why? know why? 
for work. What happened in the last one? I decided I decided to we have a word that says intrigar. I decided yeah. to give to them my life and whatever because I'm too much a owner of myself. I know very well what I want. So when someone says me that, it's when I don't do. So yeah. uh, there I decided to do everything the way they as they think that it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's hard, huh? For me specifically, it's very hard. If they used to say me, go and socialize, I'd go and socialize. Go and read this, I'd go and do that. Go and do voluntary work, I used to go. Exactly like that. But it's at the same time, it's weird because I wanted to die. I really, in a sense, I didn't want to die, Paul. But in my head, I wanted to die. So I was just trying because I want to kill myself somehow. One day we'll see. But there is a part of me that maybe didn't want to die. So we was trying everything. And because I tried everything for the first time, I was clean for one year. That for my self-esteem was like inflammated. It was like, wow, I can do it. So it's hard. It's hard. Specifically when you when you are among people socializing and people are drinking, now it's not hard anymore. You feel that you you are not in the same vibe that they are, and you have to learn to say goodbye and go. And the, the most important thing is being myself, no matter what. When I say my rubbish thing, I do, I say. I try to be as honest as I can. Of course, I respect everyone that is in front of me, but I try to be as honest to my feelings, to my person, to the things that I believe. And it's a journey. Even now with the, with the, with the, with the pandemic, I had a depression again. It was a wake up for a while. I was afraid to relapse, but it was the moon of my mother also, everything combined. It was very hard moment. And I asked for help. And I had, and here I am. I remember, I remember this. Benvindo, so <clears throat> you stop dancing. You go mm-hmm. into this spiral of drugs and alcohol. Um, when does the choreographer, when does the artist appear to create? How does this happen? I start for, when I came from New York, I was already 18 years old. They invited me to do a musical in Olympia de Paris. And I did. It was a, a choreography for one evening. I did it, very unconscious, but I did it, and it went well. And then they had an workshop in Gubank, and, and Joshua Levisa uh, asked me to, to invite me to do one of the choreographies, and I decided to do a choreography about women, because I love women. I don't like to marry them, but I love them. <laughs> it's the way it is, sorry. <laughs> you don't like to marry them? Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 so I did this choreography and the choreography went so well that um, George put the choreography in the company. The name is Salkapat. It's about India. Unconsciously, it was um, my way of this um, uh, um, esoteric world that I was searching somehow. And the choreography was really tough was made by 11 women. It's really hard because I move very quick. I have a lot of energy. And it was everything that I imagined in my head. So it went well. And after that one, I was invited to choreograph for the company every year. So I did four choreographies for the bank. And, and then some young companies invite me to do it. So I was tried to choreographing. But I always felt that I wanted to dance. So I was choreographing because I couldn't dance. It was exactly like that. Mm-hmm. After a while, after that solo that I did, Renate, and uh, years later, I realized that um, choreographing, it's, um, it's still creating, it's still communicating. It's, um, I have the chance to be with the dancers that I love, because the most important for me is to be among dancers. It's mm-hmm. beyond that world. And it's creating something that, uh, without pretension, helps to the world, because we artists, we... We are the first to um, to take risks. We have to. Some people, they are. Uh, I'm not. I want. I don't want to say badly about regular people, but uh, we, we we have to to. It's so easy in Portuguese. We have to 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 experiment things because some sometimes people they have to in their own lives. They they cannot 
be their, their, their themselves. And yeah. we as a dancers and as an artist, we have that opportunity. We have to, to guide somehow without pretensions. We have to show that, yes, we have to be ourselves like this. We have to, like, like I think, we, we need to have intentions to do things, not mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. doing. Um, the thing that the choreography has to achieve a goal, and the goal is to touch people. The, the most important, important thing for me, it's always the people. But it needs to, to como se diz preencher, it needs mm -hmm. to, I need to feel complete. It needs to satisfy me also. Yeah. When it satisfies me, then it will satisfy some people. So it's, it's that. Benvindo, so you begin creating for which reason? Because you couldn't dance? Or you begin creating because you wanted to be again a superstar? Hmm. I'm always a superstar no matter what, in my own head. <laughs> <laughs> no, the super, you know, Paul, it's funny. It's not important to be the superstar anymore. I need to create. I need to be there. I need to do, sometimes I even do for my, my, my kids that I do voluntary work. I need to do something. When I do, sometimes I'm working with them like in, my, I'm, I'm in the Paris Opera. Really. Even when I'm with schools, I put all of myself to do the best ability because I'm grateful to have the chance and to still do with the, the processes that I have in my leg. With the, I see lots of dancers that they don't have the chance even to have the career that I had. I'm so thankful that to have the chance to create, first of all, I'm a creative person. If I don't do that, I will cook for sure. I will do something in my house. It's something that it's in me. So I need to let go. We are ways, all of us, we are channels of manifestation of something. So I have to do that channel to, to become something. So in true dance, it's, it's the thing that I know best. So it's, it's that. Benvindo Fonseca has had a, a very hard life this is what I, what I was going to, to follow um, you have had a very hard life moving from Mozambique to Portugal uh, then becoming learning how to love dance you were given a chance to dance then this chance was taken away from you um, you have suffered through dance Benvindo and I know this because I know you for many years. Um, my question is, is Benvindo happy, satisfied today? Did you achieve Nirvana, if you will? Ui, Nirvana. I will only achieve Nirvana with the, when I have the relationship that I'm searching, that I deserve. The rest, yes. Paul, I'm very happy with the things that I do. Each time I'm on the studio, I'm so happy to have the chance, like I told you before. I do the work that I like to do. I try to connect with the things that I believe. I try to speak about things that I think that are important. And I have a beautiful life. Yes, yes. I have beautiful friends. The only thing, it's my mother that passed away. That it was like dying, really dying, Paul. It was really, I thought that I was going to die. Huh? I thought one day when my mother passed, I'm going to die. And uh, it wasn't like that. But um, it's, it's different. I felt like I couldn't breathe. It was like if I, uh, I was in apnea, like, like this mm. for, for two years. And then with the help of therapists and people and friends, even you, and then all of a sudden something went like this. And I start to breathe again. But I have a beautiful life. I cannot complain at all. I cannot complain at all. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I sense, Benvindo. Um, I know you've suffered very much. And when I met you, you were still struggling with your uh, addictions. But you always looked and expressed happiness, joyfulness. You were always up, maybe because of the cocaine. <laughs> no, 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 Paul, no, no, no. When I'm dancing, I never used. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I never, the stage is sacred for me. 
I never use on stage. I never use on rehearsal. And then I never use when I have something to do. Mm -hmm. I, I normally, when I use it, to celebrate or to forget about the pain. For instance, if I had a performance, the performer was okay. I was in the, because you want to use when you are very euphoric, when you are very depressive, or when you are apathic. When you have something to do, at least in my case, oh, no, 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 no. I never used when I met you and during the time that I was you, ever. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's always before or whatever. No, 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 no. <laughs> Benvindo. Um, I'm like that as a person. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a very positive person. During 10 years, I wasn't like that. I was completely depressed, completely um, dead in the, in the sense. But um, normally I'm a very positive person. And uh, when I feel down, because all of us, we have moments, I try to remember all the moments that I went through and um, the things that, that I have. I have so many things. I have friends. I have family. I have work. I, you, have, you have love for many people. This is, this is sure. I'm a very loved person. You are. Yes. You are, Benvindo, very much. Um, What's left for Bembindo Fonseca? What are the next steps for Bembindo? Ooh, still choreographing. I want to choreograph until I become 60, 65 only. And then someone will do my, an assistant will do my work. And um, my parents, they have a house in Mozambique. And they gave me the house. When I was a kid, I told you that I wanted to be a Beatle. But I used to say also that I wanted to have a house with kids and dogs. That's what I'm going to do after 60. And actually I'm going to, you know that they, they, they made a movie about myself that it's in May next year. After that premiere, I have lots of things scheduled for until the, the end of the, the year, but my priority, it's going to Mozambique with Cersei. Cersei it's a house that takes care of handicapped kids here, that I'm a voluntary and the godfather. So I'm going with them to Mozambique because my father, they gave me the house and that I will become a Cersei, like we call here in Portugal, in Mozambique, the country that I was born. That is my priority after November. I'm working on it and um, and I want some, I want a relationship. It's what I do. You know that I didn't want for 10 years. I said, I don't want anybody anymore. But after the pandemic, I changed. <laughs> I changed. I want someone special that I know that is waiting for me or me waiting for whatever. But you, yes. You, you are a special man, Benvindo. You will get a special person for you. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. But no I, doubt. Thank you, Paul. But I think I have a karma, something that I'm cleaning up. But this is a karma. You, you haven't had luck. That's all, Benvindo. I think everything happens at the right moment. And I think the right moment has to come to you. That's the only problem, I guess. After all of this time, okay. Okay. <laughs> I believe in you, Paul. <laughs> because you are in the broadcast, I'm not going to tell something. Because this is... Uh, such no my god this is long time ago it's it's um i deserve it maybe yeah. i'm um the word in portuguese it's uh, boycotar mm -hmm. maybe yeah. i'm corrupting myself because it's 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 weird normally i look always on the wrong side it's me boycotando a mi mismo yeah maybe maybe um, mm -hmm. maybe, tell us about your movie. This, this is something that interests me and that will interest uh, people. See how life gives me things, Paul. This is two Germans, two beautiful guys, Adrian and Sebastian, that they met me in Lisbon and they heard about my story. They were really interested. And then they did a movie in Germany that was, he had an award. So they had the support of the Germany uh, government to create two movies one about the favelas in Brazil and one about my story. So the movie is, com is complete. Now they are editing. And it's, um, it's like a movie documentary on the first person. It's one hour. And um, we, we went through all my life, all the ballads that I did, everything, the things that I still do, the things that I want to become. And it's, I think it's, 
it's it's a jewelry that I have there, but a jewelry to share with others. I, uh, it was funny. I, I, will, I, I like to use that word. When they were uh, filming and shooting, they told me, Benvindo, you give us such a self-esteem to do everything because you don't correct us. You don't say how you want. I said, no, I trust you. I want mm -hmm. to see what you have to give. Now do your things, of course. Yeah. And I'm here. I'm already happy to, to someone are doing a movie about myself. Of course, I know when that things that I don't like. But yeah. let's give them the chance. And Paul, for sure, it will be special. It was the first time that they allowed to go to the Gulbenkian Foundation stage after the end of Ale Gulbenkian to record something with one of the dancers. It was such an emotion day. That's All beautiful. the technicians were there. All the flowers, the dressing room with my name. And it was, and actually the premiere is going to be there. So it's, it's special. It's special. I, I will definitely be in the premiere, Benvindo, as, as we talked about. Oh, you have to. You have I, to. I will be there uh, because um, you have been an important part in my life. Um, you too, Paul. Uh, Thank you. And uh, we just have to continue holding each other, Benvindo. Okay. I just want to say something, Paul. Something very sad happened this week. I lost my director, Paul, uh, George Chalavisa. He was mm -hmm. uh, deep, we can say, the most important person in the, in the dance world for 50 years in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like a mentor, a friend, someone that was really, really special that I'm really going to miss him. He, he had cancer and he died uh, five days ago. I'm and very um, sorry. I know that he's here somewhere. Yeah, but uh, yes. Like it's... Yes, Yes, it's life. And Paul, thank you always to be there. You are mine. <laughs> I'm mine. Benvindo. Thank you. A Every pleasure day. having you. A pleasure having you to be here. Sorry about my English. It's the best that I can do. It's perfect. It's perfect. Next time we do in Portuguese. <laughs> See you soon, Benvindo. Stay healthy. I will, Paul, all my love. And I like I that, 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 um, that color on you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for having me. Bye. Ciao, benvenuto. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ciao. Bye, bye. No sé si te importa a ti. Yo me siento bien desde que nací. Bien, 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 bien. El tiempo rodeado de cubano. Imagínate, man.